Some anglers form a powerful brotherhood, wrestling mammoth monsters caught barehanded. For them, hand fishing's their toughest test of strength and survival. San Pietro, small island off the coast of Sardinia. Since the time of Caesar, men have fished these fertile Mediterranean waters. Their most prized catch, the mighty bluefin tuna, a species revered as food and as a worthy opponent. Tuna is a very strong fish. And the one that breaks the nets, that's the tuna I really love. They're some of the strongest beasts on Earth, equipped with oxygen-rich muscle tissue that allows them to stay warm and agile, even when hunting in frigid 40-degree waters. Tuna swim with astounding power and stamina, even reaching speeds of 60 miles an hour. So strong, they can easily travel across the Atlantic Ocean in weeks. Huge and shimmering, bluefin tuna fend off predators by schooling underwater, deftly corralling and killing prey. Tuna have a limitless capacity to grow larger and larger. Record tuna have stretched as long as 15 feet, weighing nearly 1,500 pounds. But no matter how big they get, their bulk never slows them down. Bluefin tuna swim faster than it's legal to drive on most freeways. These are very large, very fast-growing fish. And when a fish is as large as that, very little in the ocean can threaten them. No man can hand fish bluefin alone. It takes a tuna catching company called a tonara. The head of the fisherman is the rice, Arabic for leader. More than anyone, he bears the burden of their feast or famine. The rice is the expert. He has to be able to feel and practically be able to talk to the tuna. Each spring, Tonara fishermen, called Tona Roti, drop woven nets into the sea, creating an elaborate maze stretching nearly a mile. As tuna migrate to the northwest, they swim into a single net stretching half a mile to the shore called the tail. The tail diverts the tuna into the trap. Once inside, the fish corral into a series of chambers, ultimately leading to the final net, nicknamed the Chamber of Death. The rice decides when the nets are full, watching and checking them in regular jaunts from shore. On his go, the collective must be ready for one of the most backbreaking hand fishing practices on earth. May. Time for the harvest. The men begin pulling the net, dragging their boats inward, forcing the fish forward towards the chamber of death. As the nets close in, what starts as an almost mile-long tuna trough ends up as a single net more than twice the size of a swimming pool. Just the net weighs several tons. You have to raise it with your hands. You need a lot of strength. To avoid net-ripping chaos, timing is everything. We can lose fish when we attempt to close them in the chamber of death. The nets can collapse, and this makes the job even harder. At last, it's time for the matanza, Italian for slaughter. The massive fish flip at the surface. If the men drop any part of the net, the tuna could escape. One by one, using hooks, the tonaroti jump into the water and wrestle the behemoths on board. Modern commercial boats rely on winches. Here, they use powerful arms, proud to keep an ancient tradition alive. The grueling work takes hours. The men are exhausted, yet no one quits. At last, after months of preparing, planning, and plotting the Matanza, the 42-man Tanara team hoists up the final tuna surveying the mammoth catch. Mission accomplished. This year, it's a good harvest, 
by the spring season's end, they expect to fish over 100,000 pounds in total, gathered over as many as 10 more Matanzas. We try to keep our heads up. We hope that each year is better than the previous one. But their jubilation's only temporary. Heavy commercial fishing elsewhere around the world is destroying their livelihood. Aggressive fisheries harvest huge quantities year-round, decimating healthy tuna populations faster than the fish can reproduce, putting the bluefin in grave danger. They use satellites, airplanes. They look for schools of tuna in the middle of the sea and they enclose them with ships. Every season, they catch what we can catch in 20 seasons. Like the tuna who once ruled these waters, the ancient Tanara may soon be extinct. Their only hope is that other commercial fisheries follow their example, taking in smaller bounties, practicing sustainable techniques. There was a time, not that long ago, when bluefin tuna ruled the North Atlantic, and the Tanara fishery had little effect on it. There were so many bluefin that this relatively inefficient fishery did not threaten the populations. Respect of the sea, respect of the marine life. If you don't have a little bit of passion for the sea, for the tradition of the Tonara, I don't think you can do it.